It's the land of legends, an area best known for its tales of witchcraft. But here in the shadow of Pendle Hill, Peter Stevenson's been on the trail of a killer who seems to have got away with murder. It's a mystery that's perplexed the people of Lancashire for 70 years. A true story that's become a local legend, complete with a ghostly figure whose soul can't rest. It's a great whodunit. I mean, Agatha Christie could not have written anything better. Right, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you all to look into the distance and you'll see a village called Bashaw Leaves. Let's turn the clock back in time to March the 18th, 1934, and one of Great Britain's most famous unsolved murders, the murder of a farmer called Jim Dawson. 46-year-old Jim Dawson was shot, but his murderer, believed to be local, was never caught. The locals have always been very, very hostile towards anyone outside the village. The police came across a complete and utter wall of silence. The village is known simply as the village that refused to talk. A rural community where everyone knew everyone, Bashel Eaves, near the Yorkshire border, has hardly changed in hundreds of years. Jim Dawson was an unmarried tenant farmer at Bashel Hall. His ghost is said to haunt the countryside. And there's been stories of uh, postal staff cycling down the lane and finding a grey shape near the actual gate itself, with a hand on top of the, uh, the bar of the gate, and the words have been heard to have been said, Why? 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 Jennifer Lee Coburn is trying to find out why. She's Jim Dawson's great niece and he's writing a book in the hope of solving his murder. So this is the hall, such a special place in the family history, Jennifer. Well, it is, yes. I mean, the family, the Dawson family has lived here since, what, mid 18th century, right through to mid 20th century, I suppose. So yeah, it's a very special place. In a way, you do feel that he's, he's haunting the whole community because it still lingers, doesn't it, after all this time? That's absolutely right, and, and, and the trouble is he's in danger of turning into a myth. And the reason I decided to write the book was because I wanted to put flesh on the bones, really. He was a man, you know, he wasn't just a murder victim. It had seemed a normal Sunday evening when Jim Dawson left the Eddisford Bridge Inn to walk home. He later told police he'd seen a shadowy figure by a gate in passing car headlights. Moments later, he heard a click and felt something like a stone on his shoulder, but thought nothing of it and continued home. It was only later that he realized he'd been shot. The bullet was removed and in a bizarre twist, he was able to take police to the site of what was to become his own murder scene because four days later, Jim developed septicemia and died. In the tight-knit Lancashire community of the 1930s, murder was rare. The local newspaper followed the case with interest and called it the perfect crime. Jennifer has come here to look for clues. The newspaper reports throw up some interesting new facts. Jim Dawson's dog had been shot just weeks before, and Jim himself had been acting strangely, staying out late and sleeping all day in the weeks leading up to his death. Bashel Eves is an unlikely scene for murder. Jennifer realises that it's probable that locals knew Jim's killer, but didn't want to tell the police. Added to this problem, police couldn't find the murder weapon. They discovered that, unusually, the bullet was handmade and wouldn't fit a conventional gun. Unsure of what kind of weapon they were looking for, they ordered everyone to hand in their firearms for tests. Determined to find out more, Jennifer has been given special access to the original police files and statements. What I'm really fascinated by is, is the talk about the weapon. They don't seem to know about this weapon, do they? And, and there were no. such a stack of weapons mm. handed in. This is receipt of property. And I mean, all manner of, of 12 bore guns and all sorts of uh, .22 rifles. Mm. And what about this? One walking stick and a .410 gun taken of possession by the police on the 13th of May, 1934. What do you think that was? Well, I mean, it was, it was a homemade bullet. 
Um, and the problem was that um, it, it didn't really fit into any conventional weapon uh, of the time apart from an air gun. Uh, so really there's two theories seem to be these days that it was either um, an old-fashioned weapon called a shooting stick, which was also known as a poacher's arm. Um, and the other theory um, was that it could have been fired by a catapult. This is even more intriguing. Women yes. known by James Dawson, and it's quite a comprehensive list. Never knew he, he, knew he would have known so many women. Well, no, neither did we, really. It was <laughs> um, I mean, Jim wasn't really known as really a ladies' man, or at no. least, you know, my father never... Uh, speaks of him that way, so that it was really quite boring. While the police files have painted a colourful picture of Bashel Eves at the time of the murder, there's no forensic evidence left at all. The bullet has simply disappeared. Jennifer has asked murder expert Vincent Burke for his advice. She wants to retrace Jim's movements on the night of the shooting. Jim came in Every night, did he, Richard? More or less every night. On that particular night, no, his, his main happened. friends weren't, weren't in, really? surprisingly. Yeah. So he, he met people that he knew, but not, yeah, not but close not, friends? That's right, yes. absolutely right. Yeah. So he felt a bit lonely that night, maybe? Yeah? Um, may have been, yes. may have been. And then he'd take the long walk home. It's that's a mile right. or two down the road, isn't it? Is. It is. It's a very pretty good walk. Pretty good walk. Yeah. But he was a farmer. He was. So he's fit. And having a happy night is a part of his life. He goes through the door, and before long, he's in eternity. That's it's a dreadful story. So, Vincent, how common were murders in 1930s? The most plausible motive Jennifer has found is that Jim Dawson was meeting a woman, and a jealous husband shot him. Thus, Jim knew who his attacker was all along, but wanted to protect the woman. Vincent has a different theory. This is the gate. This is the gate. We only know this is the gate because Jim said yes. it was the gate. That's absolutely We correct. don't have any other evidence at all nope. other than he said it was here. Now, in these circumstances, my first question is that why would a person using a quaint or unusual form of rifle or gun mm -hmm. put the whole of his faith, or indeed possibly her faith, yes. uh, in <laughs> being successful? And indeed, of course, whoever was the assailant was not successful. Because if Jim had had proper attention immediately, the blow would not have been fatal. Mm -hmm. Now, is it possible, trying to get into the mind of the assassin, mm -hmm. is it possible, therefore, to believe there wasn't an assassin in the absolute sense of the word? Somebody fired something. Mm -hmm. But was it skylarking? fooling, practicing, shooting a rabbit, or whatever it may be. Is that possible, therefore, that this was a total, absolute accident? So, who did kill Jim Dawson, and why wouldn't anyone tell? Contrary to popular belief, Jennifer's discovered that there was more to her great uncle than meets the eye. But she also knows that without the bullet or the weapon, there's no little hope of finding the murderer, unless somebody gives a deathbed confession. Only then could she lay Jim Dawson's ghost to rest. It's still as full of red herrings today as it was back in the 30s. I, I can really identify with, with the police's frustration with this case, because nothing's really changed. Mmm, so I wonder if we'll ever find out the truth. And that's it from us tonight on Inside Out. We'll be back next Monday, 7.30, BBC One. Until then, have a great week. Next week on Inside Out, the voice loses his voice. Opera star Russell Watson talks exclusively about the day he was warned he may never sing again.